call? I was told to give you a call from the sheriff. Oh. Okay, are you are you the supervisor? Yes, I am. Okay, um I'm sure that you're aware of what happened yesterday, obviously. Um and and I've called around to animal activists, humane society everywhere today, and I understand that yes, he did have a right to do something to my dog had he been threatened. Okay. Um and and I do understand that. I just um want to explain a few things to you. Number one, um I live on forty acres. I've got over a quarter mile driveway. I've had my dog, I've raised him since a puppy. I've had him for eight years. He will bark at anybody that comes in our driveway. Okay, that's what he's supposed to do. A dog partly protects you too. And that's what he, not that I've trained him to do that, he just barks as soon as anybody comes in our driveway. And if if Officer Sawson was feeling threatened by my dog, why why did he even get out of his car? I, I don't understand that. To give me a summons for a medical bill. Um, obviously, we weren't home, so I, I don't understand why he even got out of his car um, as far as that. And and I'm going to be honest with you, okay? I am. I un- I understand that. Yes, my dog probably was barking at him. Both of my dogs probably were, and I'm not going to deny that one bit. Um, but I know my dog, and if he had been barking at him, I don't understand why he got out of his car to begin with. And honestly, the way that my dog was shot, he was shot point blank in the middle of his nose, and it came down through his throat and hit his foot. I honestly believe that he shot him right from his car. I really do. And in that case, I don't understand for one, like I said, um, we have 40 acres out here. We've got a quarter mile driveway. I don't understand for one, why he even got out of his car when we weren't home and he knew we weren't home. Well, no, so no. there was nobody home when this event went on? No, no, no. And I don't know what time he was here. My husband and I had left for probably, we were gone maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Okay? And so, therefore, like I said, he came He came on our property to serve me with a past medical bill, which he was unable to serve to begin with because we weren't here. Mm-hmm. And when I came home, um, I seen the thing that the sheriff department had been here. Like I said, we were gone maybe 45 minutes. But, like, when when we came home, um, not not only do I feel that he could have used some other type of force so that the whole situation could have been avoided, um, but I mean, isn't isn't there mace or isn't there a taser or isn't there something? And and not only that, but I do truly believe that he shot my dog from his car, because I'll tell you another thing: had he shot my dog and not been in his car, my dog would have went after him. I do know that because he would have been hurt and injured. Mm-hmm. And I do not believe he ever exited his car. Well, I uh, I talked with him this morning, and he told me he did drive in the driveway. He did exit the car. He started going towards the house to, uh, with the paper to serve on you, and that the dog came out of someplace. I don't know if he was sleeping under another vehicle that was out there or where he came. So he, he might have been sleeping. He might have got startled. He might have come after him, and he did come after him. And he said he tried to tried to get wave him away from him. He tried uh, um, clicking his taser rather than tasing the dog, but just clicking the taser, which makes electronic uh, arcing sound, which usually dogs don't like, and they they back off. And it didn't seem to phase him a bit. He was bound and determined that he was coming after him, and that's why he felt threatened. But that's how why he shot the animal. And you know, I I I don't know what else he could have done at that time to get away from I, the because the dog I, was between him and the car. And and I, I understand that part, I do. I do understand that part. But like like I said to you, I for one and, and, and I understand I mean I, I understand that part. I am just totally heartbroken. I'm not kidding you. I've had that dog for eight years and I know this is dumb, but I mean I had his me ten years ago and he was like my baby. Yeah. He was, and and not only do I think it was inhumane, and it should have been handled totally different, but when I got home, he just left my dog to suffer. Why didn't he just finish shooting him so that he didn't have to lay there and suffer? I came home, 
and my dog was gagging. He couldn't breathe, and he was choking on his own blood. But he was still walking around wagging his tail. Well, I, I, asked, I asked him if he did check on the dog after he shot the dog. He said he looked for that dog for over 20 minutes to see, you know, if he actually had, if it actually got hurt or if it was dead or whatever happened, and he couldn't find the dog. He said the dog took off towards the woods. So where was he at when you when you came home? Did you come back out to your home, house. Like I said, I was gone a half hour, forty five minutes at the most, and he was right by the house when we came home. He was okay. still walking around. I brought him into the house because I didn't know what happened, and honestly, I didn't even know that he had been shot. I seen the big hole in the top of his snout. And um, I thought that, you know, something happened to him. I didn't, I didn't know what. And then I seen the sheriff's thing, and I thought maybe the sheriff had just clunked him on the head. I didn't realize that he had been shot. Okay. And um, then he just started pouring out blood, and he couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he, he, he walked around and walked around and walked around for probably about a good 20 minutes, because in between this time I called the vet to see what we could do, you know, and... And my husband ended up having to kill my dog. Okay. He did. And and I just think it was totally inhumane that that he did that to begin with over a medical bill that he didn't even serve me. Well, we are we are not in the the business of just shooting people's dogs. I want you to know that uh, the only time that it's ever happened, and this this has been years in the making, is when a dog has come after a person. And being the dog. The dog, you said, does bark at people and let you know and stuff. Maybe he, does. Maybe he I, at this point, he was aggressive. He has no clue who we are. It's a different story than if it's one of your your friends that might have been uh, coming over that the dog had seen before. Probably, I would have to assume Deputy Sazen is not a regular at your house, so therefore the dog wouldn't know who he is. And he, he might have been doing what he thinks he's supposed to be doing, protecting the house, you know. And unfortunately... Uh, the, our stance is to retreat and get away from them without having to get involved in this type of an incident. It's an unfortunate incident, but I don't know how it could have been handled different, differently after talking with uh, Deputy Sazen on what had occurred. And, and I, I do understand that part of it. I do if he felt threatened. I do understand that, and, and I do understand that part of it. I just really think that that, that it was inhumane. That he came, you know, like I said, I don't keep none of my dogs. I've got two dogs. I had him and I have an English Bulldog. I don't keep my dogs tied up. We live on 40 acres. We've got a quarter-mile driveway. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if anybody comes out here, the dogs are barking immediately. And if they feel threatened or they don't want to get out of their car, we hear the dogs bark. I'll go out there. It's no problem. You know? Yeah. I, I, just, I just feel that it was very, very inhumane the way that it was handled. And and not only that, but then just to leave him to suffer choking on his own blood. Well, he he told me that he went looking around for the dog to see where the dog had gone. You know, this this makes see if the dog had died or if he needed to be uh, you know needed whatever he needed you know to try to help him. And he could not find the dog, so I don't know where the dog went. If he ran off in the woods, if he ran around the side of a building and went back under a vehicle, or wherever it, it, he happened to have gone to, but. You know, he just didn't shoot the dog and jump in his car and drive off and and leave him there. You know, but he said I he searched for him. He did not see him. He he could not find him, and he put the tag on the door to let you know that he had been there. Yeah. And then he uh, left. You know, I mean, you know, in the other scenario, you know, had he had he shot the dog and he just did it uh, for the sake of shooting the dog, why would he leave a notice on your door saying it was the sheriffs that were there? No. I know, and I understand Enid's. that part. I, I do. Yeah. I, you know, and, and, and I do understand that part. Yeah. I just want want him to know the impact that it's had on me. Like I said, he's my baby. Yeah, and I, I and I understand that. You know, I feel I have a dog. I feel the same way about him. And 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 you know, I mean, you get to, after a while, you get to be like a child. You know, you get so attached to him, it's hard to hard to part with him. And, and I, I have a, a one year old. I have a one-year-old grandson that I, I have a lot of times. And, I mean, he, he would ride that dog like a horse. That dog is the most gentle dog that there is. He just protects, the peop- you know, us when people come down the driveway. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, it's, I guess it's really unfortunate that you weren't home at the time because I, 
I would think that, you know, if he started barking and the car drove up, you would have came out to see what the reason or immediately, why they're there. Immediately. I would have immediately, and yes. This situation would have never happened, but unfortunately, he, you know, it was a nice warm day. It was sunny. Maybe he was napping someplace and he didn't... Uh, he didn't hear him, or he didn't respond to him right away until after it was he was too late. He was already out of the car. I actually believe too that if the dog would have been up at the car barking at the car, he would have never got out of the car. There's and no. He, and that's usually what what he does. I mean, anytime anybody comes down their driveway, my dogs are both barking immediately. Yeah. I I know when, and our driveway's got a bunch of bumps, and so it takes a good five minutes to get on our driveway. You know, it's it's got a bunch of bumps in it. It's not something that you can just cruise down at 30 miles an hour. I mean, you have to be going really slow, oh. you know. And I'm I'm well aware before anybody gets in my yard because okay. my dogs are barking. You you said uh, you have two dogs. One's a, one's an English bulldog. And yeah. what type of dog is this one? He is a pit bull and boxer. Oh, okay. Three quarters boxer and a quarter pit bull. So he's kind of a bigger dog. He is a bigger dog. Yeah, he he's a bigger dog. Where, 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 he said, you know, when I asked him about it, he said, this is the only one around. Was the other one with you, or was it in the house or something? No, the other one was outside, too. The oh. other one was outside because um, when we got home, like I said, my, my big dog that had been shot was right up against the house, and my little dog was, um, she was just laying by him, actually. She was looking up some of his blood. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I came home to. He, both my dogs were right by the door, right by the house when I came home. Okay. Well, he probably, after the incident happened, he probably did run off, and then he came back back to the house because, you know, the, I asked him if he looked for the dog. He said yes, he looked all over for the dog, but he didn't see him. He didn't know where he went to, and, you know, and he was trying to figure out what where the dog was at. And the dog... And, and, uh, and the he dog, didn't say nothing about my other dog at all no. because my other dog would have been right there with him, too. He would have. <laughs> he would have. She. She's a pup. She's not even a year old yet, and she followed my big dog around like, well, like he was like her dad, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, I just like I said, it, it. It's unfortunate, and I just really think it's humane. I. I really do. The, the situation I feel could have been handled totally different, yeah. and and I want him to know how how much this has hurt my family. Okay. And I, I will relay that to him, but he did say he did try using the, the taser, clicking the taser off. We don't want to go shooting a dog with a taser. Yeah. But, but to you know, he did click it off. And most of the time, dogs don't like electricity. You know, they don't like shock collars and things like that, so they will stay away from you. But this case here, it was not, that wasn't to be. You know, he, it didn't bother him a bit, and he still kept coming after him. He said he even tried throwing the papers he had for him at him, and, and he would not back up. He just kept coming after him when he was trying to get back in his vehicle. So I, I don't know. He was being protective like dogs are, that he was protecting your property. He was, you know, and it's just unfortunate that you were not home at the time to uh, See, that's call the whole him thing off. Too. And that's the whole thing. I mean, the, pur the whole purpose he came here for, and we weren't even home. I know. You know, but had he come out, I think, right away and started barking and carry, you know, like they normally do and carrying on, right, you right. Know, you'd never get out of the car. Nobody would. You know, I wouldn't get out of the car over there no. and, or anything. And you wouldn't get out either if you're at a strange house and somebody's dog was out there just barking and carrying on. I mean, it, you wouldn't come out because you are you don't know how the dog's going to react, you know, and he's just doing his job at that point, so. Okay. But, All right. Well, I appreciate your call back. Okay. And if you if you want to call me again, I can be my. I'll give you my direct number. Okay. Uh, it's seven four nine seven one seven six. And I'm I'm Lieutenant Ed Kipley. Ed Kipley. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.